Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have a super exciting video that I'm excited for you guys. And today is stunts. The craziest stunts that I have found in aviation history. Most of these are uh, weird things that I researched. I definitely went down a rabbit hole of weird things people have done in the sky, so this video is in a tribute to those aviators, those people who fly, that took it above and beyond and did something out of this world, did something that nobody else has done. So with that said, I did do my research on Google again. Don't hate me if I got anything wrong. Please comment if I did get anything wrong and correct me, please. So yeah, let's get into the video. So the first one I have is not really uh, an aviation device, but I thought it was something really cool that I should mention. And it is a jet powered porta potty. So a jet powered porta potty when I was looking into this it looked like uh, they were trying to do it for like races It was built under ten thousand dollars, which is nice if you have a spare ten thousand dollars and you want to do that It was also built in under a week. They strapped on a military surplus jet engine Boeing T-50 model 502 turbo shaft from a Navy minesweeper so they basically just got a porta potty, decided to put a jet engine on it for some reason. I thought this was hilarious. For some reason, it has 300 shaft horsepower, which in my planes, I have 180 horsepower, which is for an entire plane. Uh, it goes 70 miles an hour with a tailwind, and it was invented by Paul Steiner. I thought it was hilarious, and I thought you guys should know that too. Um, so the next thing will be flying things with balloons. So obviously we know from the movie Up, uh, I think his name is Russell and the old man decide to fly their house with a billion balloons and stuff um, to their place that they want to be and settle at. Everyone thought this was fiction, but when the movie came out, I think people were like, yes, let's try that. So. I have a few things that were flown with balloons and one is a house, of course. It went 10,000 feet for an hour. Uh, the house was 16 square feet and it was 2,000 pounds carrying six th 600 pounds of crew. And they had 300 huge balloons that measured 8 feet tall when inflated, which I am 5 foot 3, so it is much bigger than me and most humans on this planet. And it was... It was made for National Geographic's TV series, How Hard Can It Be? Which, they definitely found out how hard it could be. It definitely surprised me that only 300 balloons, I mean obviously there are huge balloons, but only 300 balloons really got that thing off the ground. And it going to 10,000 feet is absolutely ridiculous because one, I have never been 10,000 feet in a plane besides commercial airliners, which I don't even fly those or my Piper Navajo flight, which we went 19,000 feet. But 10,000 feet is still very, very high. The regular cruising altitude in planes is normally 3,000 to 7,000, uh, depending on you know what obstacles are in your way. So 10,000 feet for a huge ass balloon in the sky. Easy to think, obviously, very crazy. Next one is a bathtub. I don't know why they wanted to float a bathtub, but they did for some reason. <laughs> I couldn't find much uh, research on why they decided to float a bathtub, but my guess is why not? That would be exactly my thinking if I had that sort of money. I would be like, okay, how can I- I would want to fly myself, honestly. I would want to attach balloons to myself and try and fly up, but bathtub is also pretty cool. The next one is a flying toilet. So I found a video of a flying toilet here, and I- I don't know what to think of it. I don't know if it's fake. I couldn't find much on it, but I think this is absolutely hilarious that they made a toilet fly and not even just with wings, with actual, or not even with balloons, with the actual flying, they put wings on a toilet. So if you need a poop in the sky, you can poop in the sky, I guess. So the next one is dogs, of course, cause why would it anybody want to fly their dog i mean that is something that i kind of have wanted to do if i had an animal like that and it's just cool so i know jenna marbles flew her dog with balloons but she was in 
her house. They were enclosed and they were all safe. So that's one example of someone flying their dog with balloons. Um, so yeah, and the, this goes into our next one is a flying lawnmower. So this one, I still don't really know if it's fake or not. And this is a huge meme of this lawnmower going off in the sky and flying <laughs> for some reason. And supposedly it's a novelty remote controlled airplane designs produced by a custom model airplane shop called Flying Things. And somehow they made that thing go up go in the air and i just think this is absolutely hilarious i don't know how they did it at all because it doesn't look like it has any sort of way of motion it doesn't have any wings on it either so it can't go under bernoulli's principle and get that airflow so now that we have all the joke ones done we'll go into the real stunts of aviation and this will be a separate category and it's switching planes mid-air. So this has been done many, many times. So I will give you the brief on some of them. So with the glider, so they got two gliders and they had a passenger in this glider. So this is glider one and this passenger came out of the came out of the glider went on the wing and then another glider was below it and so this man decides to do a front flip off of the first wing and then on to the second wing of this aircraft and then when he was on this aircraft and jumped onto the aircraft doing a somersault the other aircraft came up and he decided to go to the middle, stand in the middle of the freaking thing, and then touch it while the other glider was upside down. So this is absolutely insane, but this is obviously a good showcase of, you know, the limits of aviation and what we can pretty much do. Um, I think this is an extraordinary feat of bravery and a little bit of stupidity, but you know, nobody died, nobody was hurt. This was a Red Bull stunt. And I think it was absolutely amazing to see it, you know, my mouth was open the entire time in awe of just, wow, this is crazy. I never knew humans would even you know, do this. And the next one is the doorway in the sky, which was done by Luke Alkins and Andy Far Farriton. I don't know how to say his name, but this is the door in the sky. If you've seen it on TikTok or the Red Bull page, they started from a mountain to to what is gliders that have those like squirrel suits that can glide just with their bare bodies they started from a mountain from 13,123 feet so that's a huge mountain <laughs> and then they had two minutes and 45 seconds to free fall 10,500 feet and land safely in a flying plane now I want you guys to really think about this because not only do they have one skydiver, they have two sky gliders and their goal I'm guessing was to get at least one person into this plane and they're in the Rocky Mountains or they're in like some sort of mountain range and if you guys fly yourselves or you study flying, mountain flying is not that easy. You obviously have to watch out for mountain wave turbulence, you have to watch out for the elevations um, and these people are starting out from the highest elevation i'm pretty sure that uh, possibly they could be at and the plane has to be a lot lower than where they started so that they can actually glide into the airplane so i just wanted you guys to consider that and really think about how crazy that is i definitely wanted to make this video to show you guys the limit of aviation and the insaneness especially since i'm getting into aerobatics myself i would absolutely love to do one of these stunts when i'm older and a lot more experience so i thought it was nice informing you guys some of the crazy things they've done two gliders just straight up going into this plane at the top of a mountain absolutely insane one of the most insane things i've ever heard in aviation and the next one is of course the two pilots that skydived and switched planes mid-air so this is another red bull stunt so two red bull pilots went up and they nosedive their plane straight down and when they nosedive their planes they had special things on their plane to make sure it stayed in a nosedive and they did this with the test flight and they had safety pilots on board and the faa did not give them any clearance to do this stunt because it was too risky 
A mission of it was to nosedive two planes and then switch the pilots mid-air, having nobody in the planes, and switch the pilots mid-air, and then take control of the planes and land both planes safely. And I think the the safety the trial runs or the safety runs, um, they they did they did it successfully with safety pilots on board. But when it came down to the actual stunts, uh, they only got one person to switch safely, and the other plane landed safely and the other plane sadly had a parachute and the other pilot had a parachute down and that plane crashed and i'm pretty sure it's not going to be able to fly but they did switch off at least one person which i think is absolutely insane i would never personally do that because too much time constraint too much stressing and worrying but absolutely insane i love it next one is also a red bull stunt and this goes into the space jump so I think this was all over social media one time, you guys probably have heard about it, but Felix Bumgarner, <laughs> Felix decides for Red Bull he wants to do a space dive, so they go to the edge of space, uh, 127,852.4 feet, about 24 miles above ground. So. Of course, that is insane. That is beyond what airliners fly. That's beyond anything that any human has gone to to just free fall. And when he got up there, he only had oxygen for about 10 minutes. So that is scary in itself. And he set the record for the free fall. Free fall that set the highest speed ever recorded without an aircraft at 843.6 miles per hour. Now, I really want you guys to take in that 843.6 miles per hour on your body. My plane that I fly, the fastest plane I have ever flown myself, has only gone maybe 250 knots. Now, increase that to five times, increase that to 843 miles per hour. That is literally insane. That is faster than an airliner. I think airliners go close to 700 miles per hour, I wanna say. Don't quote me on that, that's just off the top of my head, but that is absolutely insane. He set the record, so the space jump, absolutely insane, but he lived, and I'm pretty sure he broke the sound barrier with his body, which must have hurt, because breaking the sound barrier is an extremely loud occurrence to happen. If you guys ever heard a jet going supersonic, you can definitely hear that break of the speed barrier, so just absolutely insane i would want to 100 percent want to do that eventually if i didn't die the next stunt or next crazy thing i've researched is the longest flight ever so the longest flight ever lasted over two months so you may be wondering how did they stay in a plane for two months because it was a cessna 172 which if you guys don't know what a 172 is it's basically just a regular car with wings is what i like to call it it's just as big as a car maybe even smaller because you don't have the trunk um, besides the baggage compartment so there's not much else that you can do so the longest flight ever happened in 1958 it was a total of 64 days 22 hours and 19 minutes absolutely insane uh the whole trip was 150,000 miles and that is about six times around the earth six times around the earth stuck in one plane not being able to get out not being able to retouch the ground and this all happened because an entrepreneur wanted to promote his las vegas hotel i'm not sure at all how this has to relate to a las vegas hotel of doing the longest flight but obviously if you do aviation stunts and especially something that's crazy like this it's gonna get a lot of attention so probably it helped them out in the long run they spent over a year modifying it to attempt the record this was just an attempt to break the world record for longest flight um, i think in the end they decided that they wanted to just keep going until they can't go <laughs> anymore which fair if they were if they already broke the record they were they probably would be like let's just keep going so nobody else can break it so yeah they spent a year modifying it and the most significant modifications they included was an additional fuel tank in the belly um, to supplement the 47 gallons carried in the wing. So they added extra gallons so that they wouldn't have to refuel as much. 
Um, they added a ma mattress to nap on, which thank God they added that because I don't know how they would have napped in that 172. Um, a small sink and a foldable camp toilet. So they had water, they had your camp toilet, which I can only imagine. I have been in a plane for more than like four hours and it does start to stink if you're with somebody else because you guys are trapped in this box together and most 172s do not have AC. So when it gets hot, you smell each other's sweat, like it is kind of miserable. You so they first made a low pass on the airfield to allow a chase car to paint white stripes on the aircraft tires to make sure they didn't do any secret landings. And the way to ensure that is after the whole competition's over, they can see if there's any scuff marks on the paint. Um, so which there wasn't any scuff marks. Uh, so twice daily, a truck uh, fitted with a fuel tank and pump would rendezvous with the aircraft over a straight stretch of closed highways along the California-Arizona border. So it had a way to refuel and they did it kind of the opposite of the way F-15s or, you know, military jets refuel because obviously military jets can refuel in the sky with no problem. So they just did it from the ground and had a truck refuel them still in the sky. Uh, and the Cessna would hover 20 feet from the ground, which if you're a pilot, you know how hard it is to continue hovering, uh, not, you know, immediate land, immediately land especially 20 feet off the ground. Um, and they would use an electric winch to lower the hook and snag to uh, snag the refueling hose. Um, Tim or Cook, which was the people who flew the two months, would stand on the platform outside and insert the hose into the belly of the tank, taking around three minutes to fill. Of course, over the flight, they refueled 128 times, which absolutely insane. They did that while they were flying. Obviously, someone would have been flying while they did that but just insane and the food had to be chopped up and stuffed into little thermos jugs to get up to the pilots a quart of water was sent for bathing every other day so they had a shower in there too and any food they got was crushed up in these little thermoses they were going through it they were going through the trenches to get to this point but it made them legends in aviation and they made history so at one point tim was flying asleep while flying for over an hour and the aircraft was kept aloft thanks to the rudimentary autopilot they had installed. The autopilot then failed days later. So thank God they installed autopilot and everything. They had 39 days and the generator also failed. So they had no lights, no heat or a fuel pump. The fuel, the pair relied on hand pumping to transfer fuel and soon after had to refuel in the dark with no lights or moon. So that, that really sucks. Just fueling in dead ass night. They finally landed on February 7th, 1959. And then Robert and Tim died. Robert Tim died in 1976 and John Cook died in 1995. So I just want to sit here and honor those people who took two months to go fly in a plane and showing the actual limits of Cessna 172 and how far and how much power that plane can really fly if it was continually used. So we'll move on. So the next one was riding a skate park under a hot air balloon. So this is also Red Bull, of course. A lot of the crazy things, I'm sorry, how it's been done by Red Bull. I couldn't find too many other things outside of Red Bull, but I've tried getting both stories of it. And this is where they basically got a big ass hot air balloon and attached a skate rink under it so a BMX rider can do some tricks while they're 2,000 feet in the air. So this was done by Chris Kyle, a Scottish BMX pro. They floated 2,000 feet above the ground, which in aviation terms is not that high. That's lower than most cruising altitudes on planes, so they were probably safe enough. And they definitely probably got clearance beforehand. Chris Kyle had a parachute on him just in case anything happened. It was made from the same composite as a Formula One car because obviously it's super heavy. It needs to be um, have the aerodynamics when it's in the sky. And it also had to have super, super um, deliberate weather conditions. So that what it took them probably over three years of planning to even get this in which is insane 
balloon was six times larger than any standard hot air balloon capable of carrying a 1.7 ton BMX bowl in the sky. And just seeing the videos of this, it is absolutely insane to watch. Like, it's insane to even see. So the next one will be tunnel airplane or flying planes through tunnels. So also two Red Bull stunts. Dar Dario Cost Costa took off in one tunnel and flying his race airplane in and out of the seconds at speeds of 250 miles per hour. Or I think that's knots per hour, which is absolutely insane. One flying through a tunnel is every GTA um, player's dream. I play a lot of GTA and I can't even do it on GTA. It is absolutely insane that he flew this, took off in the tunnel and completed his flight through the tunnel going 250 miles per hour. And that is the fastest plane I have ever flown is 250 miles per hour and it's just absolutely insane he has that much control obviously in theory it could be easy but there's so many hazards to it and adding on to the craziness of that two british pilots paul bim and steve jones i'm probably butchering these names but at least i tried to get their names out there the two british pilots flew two planes simultaneously in formation through a hangar uh, this doesn't seem so crazy and out of the realm of aviation just one plane flying through a hangar is extremely dangerous uh, and you have to be really accurate with your flying to get those points and having two side by side going through a hangar is absolutely insane there's not much else i can say about that other than insane crazy insane next one is the story behind the sr-71 blackbird super low knife edge past so this i thought was super interesting and people should kind of know about it and this is about the fastest flight ever from the west coast to east coast and it was under uh, and it was a 64 minutes to fly from the east coast to west coast which is absolutely insane it takes me at least four hours to fly from texas to maryland so to get that done in an hour is absolutely insane. It was in achieved in 1990 uh, by the SR-71 Blackbird on its retirement flight back to the museum in Virginia. The aircraft was designed to outrun missiles, so it was easily capable of the 2,124 miles per hour speed it averaged on its flight. And that is the average. That is absolutely insane. I thought that was a piece of aviation history that should be talked about more. I think people don't know the capabilities of planes nowadays and how fast they can actually go. Obviously, people know jets can go supersonic, but I don't think people can actually perceive how fast supersonic can can be up by that many mocks and having that many G's pushed on your body. Um, as someone who's had more than three G's pushed on its body, I cannot imagine going that that many G's. Absolutely insane. I would pass out, but I would try it and I would be passed out during the whole time, but at least I would get there. <laughs> so this one so now we're gonna go in kind of the incidents where people weren't trying to do stunts but ended up doing stunts in the end so next one is the f-15 that landed with no wing so this one i completely forgot about you guys may know about it it happened may 1st 1983 and they were doing desert training engagement training in the desert that would pay two new f-15ds against four older A4 and Skyhawks. As the Skyhawk pilot attempted to lock onto the F-15, he inverted his aircraft and began to climb unaware that the F-15 was flying directly above him then. Two jets collided with the Skyhawk impacting the F-15 right where its right wing met the fuselage. So the Skyhawk pilot ejected in this case, but the F-15 flyer pilot didn't know its wing was gone. <laughs> and this is one of those cases where emergency just takes up all of your energy and you realize these things, but he started going in a spin uh, and his plane started getting out of control. When he looked at his wing, he saw 
too much too much fuel leaking out of it so he thought the wing was still attached but apparently it, it was just from the wing being detached and all the fuel leaking out so this man thought his wing was on the entire time and there was just some kind of damage to it and he landed at 260 knots which is 300 miles per hour which is insane i think the regular landing of uh, F-15 is at least 100, um, but him landing at 300 miles per hour is absolutely insane. We land, my Skyhawk lands at 65 miles per hour, normally. Oh, you're not 65. 65 knots is the touchdown speed we go at. So him landing at 300 miles per hour is absolutely insane, and he got out and obviously knew his wing was missing. So this is one of those stunts that wasn't meant to be a stunt, but uh, we know and this would only work with the f-15 because one the f-15 is so powerful their engines could literally straight up uh vertically climb them without the use of their wings so landing with only one wing with the f-15 isn't so you know crazy just because it theoretically can work but now we have proof that it works and it's absolutely insane so next one we'll go into is a plane lands on a helipad and this was done by lewis luke this was done by Luke, I don't know how to say his last name, and he lands on a helipad, he obviously had a very aerobatic plane with him, and he completed over 650 landings, this was something I was super interested in, but he completed over 650 landings, and this helipad was on top of 56 story hotel. I've never even seen more than 10 stories in a building. I need to go study exploring more. And it had a 27 meter diameter, which is not much. So they reduced the whole plane to 425 kilograms to actually make sure he didn't do it. And I'm pretty sure on his practice beforehand, they practiced in like the ground using just a ring and he did not make the landing and everyone was so nervous. And they were like, okay, we'll just do it and they did it and they landed and he was perfectly safe so crazy crazy stunt so the next one is sky king so i thought this was something i should bring up obviously this was a super tragic story and this is the story of sky king this obviously is a very talked about thing in aviation but it was done by richard russell in 2008 he worked at Se seattle airport and russell was struggling with chronic traumatic and for whatever he was struggling with ct without even realizing it and he was very depressed so he made the impulsive decision of stealing a plane he stole a dash 8 from their airport and his his words on atc were so sad because he was like i don't want to hurt anyone i'm just gonna try and do some barrel rolls and then i'll land the plane um, and so he successfully completed a barrel roll in a dash 8, which is absolutely insane. Dash 8s are obviously not meant to barrel roll. So he did the barrel roll and he recovered about 10 feet above the water, which is insane. Insane to recover 10 feet above the water. And he successfully did that and then he crashed shortly after. So I just wanted to kind of bring awareness to that. Uh, being a pilot is really hard, especially when you have mental health issues. He obviously wasn't a pilot, but it goes for the same about everyone who works at the airport. It's hard to help for mental illnesses because of the FAA's regulations on mental illnesses and what you can do with a medical. But we'll move on. So this one's a, a more goofy one to you know lighten the mood. So this one was done by Larry Walters on July 2nd, 1982 and he did a flying lawn chair. So this story was just hilarious to me when I was reading it. And he filled up 45 helium filled weather balloons, which weather balloons are obviously balloons that can go significantly higher. And he went 16,000 feet, which is insane. Again, normal pilots fly at most like 7,000 feet. Um, airliners by like 30,000 feet so he's halfway there uh, and this happened in San Pedro California yeah 16,000 feet during the landing the aircraft became entangled in power lines but Walters was able to climb down safely he did have a parachute with him his intention was to float over the Moab desert then use a pellet gun to shoot down shoot himself down in order to land 
Uh, he took a pellet gun with him, a CB radio, sandwiches, beer, and a camera. And he spent 45 minutes in the sky. Now, I don't recommend you doing this, but it does sound pretty good. I would just say be aware of what airspace you're in. Make sure you're not in a controlled airspace or if you are in a controlled airspace talk to your air traffic controller we will move on and this is another thing i just wanted to include really quick and it is the fastest plane in the world so it is the north american x-15 and it reached a top speed of mach 6.72 now if you guys don't know what that is it is 4520 miles per hour now I've only had 4 G's been pulled on me and I think at 4.5 G's I gr grayed out. I didn't fully pass up but my eyes did lose a little blood. Um, and this happened in 1967. So back in the olden days uh, where dinosaurs, <laughs> just kidding, not dinosaurs, but um, back in the olden days, I just think that's insane that that plane went 4,520 miles. And then it was an experimental rocket plane that was part of the U.S. X-Plane program and was used to gather data on aerodynamic stability and control at extremely high speeds. I think that's something pretty cool. And we are going to end on a space shuttle. I know that is not technically aviation. It's technically space and nobody flies it. It's technically your ground control who flies it, but I think it's something that people should know, know about and be informed about. So it's not a traditional airplane, but the space shuttle is a winged spacecraft. And when it, you know, re-enters Earth's atmosphere, it reaches top speeds over Mach 25, which is 17,000 miles per hour um, during re-entry in the in the Pioneer 11, when it swung by Jupiter, clocked in at 107, 107,000 miles per hour, which is insane. And the gravity of the giant planet accelerated the Juno probe to approximately 165,000 miles per hour, 65,000, and it makes it the fastest man-made object ever built. So obviously that doesn't really go into aviation topics of it, but I think that's super interesting that, because I'm also super interested in to space, but that we can even build something that goes that fast. Even if it's using another planet's gravity to propel itself, it is still super smart engineering. This video is getting super long and I did not mean for it to be, but that is where we will end off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really tried to do my research this time. Some of it probably got messed up in my researching. Comment if I did get anything wrong. I love learning that, learning new things from you guys every day and I love this community. Uh, if you guys want to subscribe to my Patreon, I don't start at a dollar and you guys get a lot of extra clips of my life in and outside of aviation. Then I have a Venmo and PayPal if you guys would like to donate to me so I can make more higher quality videos for you guys. Um, the reason I made this video was to kind of highlight the crazy historical things we have done as aviators and as pilots. I think a lot of these things are under carpet with a lot of things and I think they should, you know, get more recognition with how crazy things are and how brave these people were to do all these crazy things.